At MDoc, we are so excited about the power of responsible AI to transform the lives of members living with ca chronic conditions such as cancer. I can tell you personally, it's allowed me to sleep better at night. Honored again to be um, in this room, and I'm even more honored uh, to then um, introduce our next speaker, um, Dr. Neneka Mopeson. I hope I didn't butcher that too badly. Um, she's the founder and CEO of MDoc uh, that provides AI enabled. A self care solution. Um, she was previously the executive director for Africa at the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. Uh, she's a trained uh, pediatric physician. She has been at McKinsey, the World Bank, Merck, CDC, uh, the list goes on. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Mobison. Thank you so much, um, Prof, and also uh, a huge thank you to then MQF. It's a real pleasure to be here, and it's a pleasure to be here um, as a Nigerian-American who grew up in Nigeria, trained here, um, did a lot of work here, and then went back um, to um, the continent. Um, I've often felt frustrated that we're not working together across the oceans to collectively try to address the challenges that are all facing us as humans. So it's a real pleasure, and I'm really particularly grateful to Dilip um, for having um, the, the, the audacity to bring uh, uh, both uh, Darlington and I here today. Um, so I'll be really sharing um, about our work um, at, at MDOC. Uh, I co-founded um, MDOC really because my father died prematurely, preventably, um, from complications from a massive stroke um, that ended his life too soon. And I was frustrated and I was angry uh, when I saw that years later, the status quo hadn't changed. Uh, so in terms of, um, I, I know that Gary said we really shouldn't talk about uh, the disparities, uh, but I will uh, quickly just highlight for, for Africa um, the reality. Uh, because I think a lot of times people think of only a couple of conditions when it comes to the continent and don't often think about cancer or other chronic conditions. Uh, the reality is globalization, urbanization, the rise in sedentary lifestyles, exposure to the environmental risk factors that we've talked about today are, are really setting up um, a catastrophic burden for, for our communities across the continent. Uh, the Lancet um, uh, Commission on Oncology predicts that at least a million Africans will die prematurely from cancer uh, by 2030, double what we saw in 2020. We conducted a prevalence study um, with funding actually from Merck for Mothers in 2019 that showed that 40 to 60 percent of women of reproductive age um, are living with obesity, uh, overweight. And our supply from a health workforce perspective, it's dwindling by the second. COVID actually has um, led to more and more of our health workforce leaving Africa and coming here. Um, and so we've really been struggling with that burden. And then when it comes to funding, only 2% of all global funding has gone to chronic conditions and included in that is cancer. And so the reality is we really just don't have the ecosystem that we need um, to support people living with chronic conditions such as cancer. Just wanted to share with you just some, um, some data from the prevalence study that I mentioned. Uh, 75 to 86% of women had never um, been, had their breasts examined by a healthcare worker. It was worse when it came to cervical cancer screening. 88 to 94% of women had never been screened for cervical cancer. This is in Lagos and Abuja, which are you know, c big cities um, in the most populous uh, country in Africa. And yet, when it came to HIV, 60 to 70 percent of women had been screened for HIV. Now, if we know about um, some of the funding initiatives, a lot of funding went into HIV um, years ago. So just showing when investment is made, access can happen. And we've heard about kind of the, the ask for funding to really make a difference. So that's where you know, we come in. Um, I co-founded MDoc to essentially optimize the end-to-end self-care experience for people living with or at risk for chronic health conditions, leveraging quality improvement methodology, so think Lean Six Sigma, data, technology, as well as behavioral science. Um, we leverage a four-pillar approach um, to what we call integrated um, high-tech, high-touch care. 
So our key um, platform is Complete Health. It's an omni-channel, AI-enabled platform that um, provides virtual coaching. We've talked a lot about patient navigation, which has just blown my mind today, because that's exactly what we do. Um, we provide virtual coaching, supporting people what we used to say for the 99.9% .9 of the time, they're out of a healthcare facility, but now we're with them right, right when they're in the healthcare facility as well, helping them advocate um, for their health. Um, we also, uh, because we don't prescribe and we don't diagnose, we've created a geocoded directory of healthcare services, facilities, um, and providers that are actually also has a review system aligned with the National Academy of Sciences um, quality domains, the six quality domains, so that our members are able to review their experience of care across those quality domains so that healthcare providers don't feel defensive but are actually more motivated to leverage quality improvement to address those specific elements. In addition, we recognize that mobile phone penetration rates are not appropriate proxies for digital literacy. And so we created an in-person experience, essentially community-based nudge hubs, health kiosks, which are not a destination, but rather as a pass-by, where people can learn how to uh, work with the digital platform, meet with a coach in person, and a lot of the people that we serve cannot afford um, monitoring devices, and so there they can track their, their blood pressure, check track their glucose, um, and, and meet a friendly face. And then the final piece of what we do is tele-education. The three element, the three pillars are really member-facing, but the fourth pillar is very much provider-facing. We realized as, we, as we're investing in digital literacy and health literacy, our members were going to the healthcare facilities and weren't, weren't getting the right kind of care at the right time. And so in partnership with University of New Mexico's Project ECHO, we've now trained over 15,000 healthcare workers, not just in Nigeria, but in Kenya, Ghana, South Africa, to really focus on really providing the right kind of care um, when it comes to cancer, chronic disease, and so much more. Today we're serving over 110,000 members. Majority make less than $3 a day, so low income. 67% have smartphones, about 82% are women. We prioritize chronic conditions. Um, in terms of our members with cancer, about 80% have metastatic cancer. So they are coming very late stage diagnosis uh, because of the same issues that we've heard about today. Um, and we're doing our best to serve them. In terms of how we work, um, we partner with other um, organizations around providing um, uh, innovative financing mechanisms. mechanisms. We've created a digital affordability, affordability algorithm that allows us to leverage other um, metrics, not the typical income, et cetera, to understand their ability to pay, also understanding that they're surrounded by a community and that we leverage crowdsourcing in our cu cultural context to support care. And so therefore, leveraging that to identify what tiers um, of, of, of subsidy they may require from partners such as pharmaceutical companies and corporates. And then we provide AI-enabled um, self-care support, which I'll get into shortly uh, through our coaching model, as well as um, community outreach. Here you see we offer three to, three to four community outreach programs every single week, um, really meeting people at the churches, at mosques, in the markets, um, really meeting them, leveraging our co roving community ambassadors who carry a backpack of devices and um, uh, provide cancer screening and other comorbidity screenings right there for them. We work with the police force, customs, etc. This just is a very high level um, view into kind of the journey. When they sign up onto our platform, they have access to our AI enabled chatbot Chem. Chem um, essentially in um, the Nigerian Igbo language stands for Nkem. Nkem means my own. And um, Yoruba language, also Nigerian, uh, it's uh, short for kemi. Kemi means pamper me, cherish me. And so the idea is really around teaching our members to care for themselves, um, leveraging the power of technology. And so we, for our, through our virtual health coaching, um, every member gets a, their own dedicated health coach that's backed by a fitness coach, an emotional wellness coach, a nutritionist um, that provides virtual support to them, digital nudges, health education, appointment reminders, medication adherence support, um, all of that um, really around the clock. Uh, our fitness coaches um, meet with them not just uh, virtually but also in person at the markets, at the nudge hubs that I highlighted, and we've seen uh, an improvement in terms of the average exercise duration. Not at all close to what uh, WHO is um, proposing is ideal, but it's, it's a pathway. Uh, we also provide emotional wellness guidance, as I highlighted, through our coaches, and then tele-education um, uh, collectively so that uh, our members are not walking alone. At MDOC, we are so excited about the power of responsible AI to transform the lives of members living with chronic conditions such as cancer. I can tell you personally, it's allowed me to sleep better at night. 
Yeah, so how? So we, um, when COVID hit, literally overnight, we were met by uh, healthcare facilities, members asking us for more than self-care. They were asking us for emergent, urgent care, talking about uh, being at the healthcare facilities and gates being closed. And we literally were so worried about our ability to serve them 24-7. And because we kind of created this pathway for digital, everyone was relying on us. And that I could not sleep those nights. And so in that time, we were able to, with funding support, uh, initially build CHEM, the chatbot that was a set initially just rules-based. Because majority of our members and about 60% of our members with cancer have hypertension, we initially focused on hypertension, uh, really to help us uh, address kind of the expansive inquiries of our members. But there were many limitations with it. Um, it had limited conversational engagement depth, limited multilingual support, scalability issues, and really a dependency on predefined questions and scenarios. We had used the interactions of our members um, with our coaches to essentially build um, the bot, but it wasn't sufficient because what we realized is that you, if you're really supporting a member, in her or his journey of care, you have to meet, to meet them where they are means to truly meet them where they are and understand what matters to them at that moment in time. So a grandmother with breast cancer may not want to talk to her coach about her next appointment or how she's feeling about living with cancer. She may want her coach to answer whether she should put palm oil on the umbilicus of her newborn grandbaby. And in order to really meet her where she is, you have to be able to answer that question and support her appropriately. I was having sleepless nights because I was worried about our ability of our coaches to be able to provide that expansive support in an evidence-based, contextualized way. That's where large language models came in. With the advent of generative AI, we've really been able to expand our ability to provide personalized care support to people around the clock and really answer what matters to them in the most empathetic way. We've, it, with support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, HASH, which is a network um, out of Uganda, as well as Google, we've really been testing the integration of these large language models into CHEM and testing for accuracy, completeness, quality, um, safety, contextualization to the African context, uh, friendliness, friendliness and equity and gender inclusion, and it's been incredible. In terms of kind of what we focused on, specifically really about CHEM's ability to meet people where they are, as I've highlighted, and really uh, answer the expansive nature of their inquiries, the breadth and depth. And then second, CHEM's ability to be an intake coordinator when people enroll onto the platform and we're helping them co-create their, their health goals, aligned with their shared goals with their healthcare providers, really helping understand what matters to them at that point in time. CHEM has been able to do that. And then the last piece is really serving as a virtual assistant to our health coaches who often get really burnt out because they're dealing with the, the, the realities of the lives of their members. We co-design with the members that we serve. It's from them that we learn, and we leverage their input and put that into, the mo into the, our models. We have been able to leverage thousands and thousands and thousands of our own interactions between members and coaches to form our data sets, so really reflecting the population we serve to train our models. And we do rapid cycle testing, um, iterate with our, with our uh, machine learning team and our clinical team, and then test it with our uh, community members leverage their feedback and put that back in and go back at it again. Iterate, 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 but always having their voices in what we do. This is just a snapshot of Chem answering in Pidgin English. Um, so today we're able to leverage both Pidgin English, uh, which is one of the key languages in Nigeria, um, as well as English. Um, and you can see some of kind of their feedback here, um, as in, uh, wow, so if you reply me for pigeon, it makes sense. Meaning like, actually it makes sense. It's, re it's replying to me in pigeon. And I can't tell you how many people would carry the phone and say, please, I want to talk to Kem more. Why, why must it be written? Can I speak to it? Why can't it start speaking to me? And so, and so many folks have said to us, like, this is going to allow me to have more confidential conversations and really have the access that I've been really wanting more of. Um, so for, with, our, with, our, with our early results, we're hugely optimistic um, that, and we are seeing in terms of um, CHEM supporting our coaches, uh, to be frank, we're actually seeing CHEM doing better than our human coaches across many of the dimensions, across safety, across completeness, across accuracy, and we're expanding that study to, to look at how uh, large language models in the context of our health workforce shortages can do and potentially provide 
similarly effective, if not more effective care with the appropriate human guardrails and having the right humans in the loop, we can potentially truly meet people much more appropriately and deliver the outcomes that we're trying to do. You can see here we've been able to um, show improvements in terms of controlled blood pressure, incre incre uh, improvements in treatment duration, improvement in self-efficacy. Um, and so, you know, we're doing this with very limited resources. Uh, and so I've learned um, that from this kind of journey in terms of generative AI, that it's teaching us that building that contextual relevance, cultural sensitivity, and gender inclusiveness, it takes time, it takes iteration, and it takes working the com with the communities that we serve to build their trust. Also, all of us must become AI literate. I've had real challenges in my team seeing kind of the breakdown from a gender perspective in terms of clinicians all of a sudden, all of a sudden feeling very uncomfortable because they're not the smartest people in the room. And so we've had to invest in building their capability in terms of AI literacy and, and so that they can appropriately pressure test. But truly building that AI literacy is key. So for us, um, what's next for us is really expanding CHEM's ability to, essentially we're trying to ensure health coaching is now 80% CHEM and 20% human. That will allow us to scale. That will allow us to have impact. That will allow us to ensure that people are living healthier, happier, and more productive lives. In addition, we're going to be leveraging more African languages, leveraging those data sets, so that, and also doing the voice um, to text features as well that have been asked from our community. Um, just again, it's a real pleasure to be with you all today. Uh, I really wanna highlight, we can work across oceans to do this. AI really can transform all of our lives, um, but we've got to be part of the solution to ensure that we uh, ensure a healthier, happier, and more productive world. Thank you.